Thank you, Sergey, for this nice introduction. So it's my pleasure to be back here. Uh, last year, I presented something about uh, two-phase flows connected to uh, the problem of uh, renewable energy. So we had some uh, discussion about this in this institute. But to, today, I will present something very different, uh, which is, in fact, uh, related to uh, the better uh, dis uh, district discretization of uh, ocean models. Uh, and uh, it will be connected to the, another talk that will be given after the, the, the break concerning the NEMO model that will be introduced. So we use the same model for coastal flow in high resolution. So this is a project that was, uh, uh, in fact, uh, constructed around the idea that uh, we need to improve boundary conditions between atmosphere and ocean, especially um, for different topics, but uh, in, in, in order to have a better description of the so-called mixed mixing layer at the surface of the ocean at high resolution. So this project is in, uh, in fact involving some uh, different groups, so there is a list of names, different projects, three projects are concerned with this, and uh, we needed uh, some new uh, field experiments and uh, uh, some exercise about identification of turbulent model parameters. I will focus here in this presentation. Okay, so uh, the point is that uh, if you consider uh, high-resolution model, I say one kilometer in horizontal and uh, uh, one meter in vertical, but which is now very possible in coastal flows and even in a large, larger basins. This is an uh, example from NEMO model. Um, so then, oh sorry, Ma then it's, uh, it's possible to observe um, artificial um, internal waves, as you can see here, for example, the signal of temperature, which is absolutely different from what is observed from gliders, for example, uh, on, on the left side from temperature and or salinity. And uh, in the same time, uh, we developed some uh, experiments concerning high-frequency high weather measurements of surface currents. So this is a typical measurement of currents. Um, resolution is about a few kilometers, so it's comparable to the model resolution. So you can see inertial motion. And in combination of this, you will see some formation of vortices and a very complex flow. Just to see that uh, this uh, surface layer is in fact absolutely not homogeneous, okay? Uh, so this is very important because uh, in coupled atmosphere ocean model, we basically use quasi-study bulk boundary conditions, uh, which cannot be accept accepted in fact uh, as this kind of high resolution. So you will see now formation of vortices and you will, get, you will see some formation of uh, some convergence zone now, just now. Okay, so uh, this signal is, is filtered. It's about 70% uh, of, uh, of the energy. I will switch off uh, this slide very quickly. Uh, just the, the measurement techniques use, in fact, um, the uh, Doppler, okay, uh, the Doppler shift in the uh, spectra of signal, of backscattered uh, signal, if you emit a single electromagnetic wave. Uh, yes, here. Uh, there is a backscatter by the, the crest of the waves, and in such a way you, you can deduce from the Doppler shift velocity of waves and then velocity of currents, okay? Uh, so we get maps from a given site. You can get maps of the currents, and with two sites you can get, of course, the velocity current. So this is an example of uh, this kind of measurement. So you get a 2D description about the surface layer, but we want a 3D description. So for that, we developed some system, which is in fact floating system, ADCP, from uh, the sea surface, and in such a way it's possible to measure the vertical profile of horizontal currents. So here you can observe the two components of horizontal currents from depth from zero to 10 meters, in time, and in time, uh, this is a, sp a specific wind event, starting wind, in such a way that you can see the historical description of profiles exhibit some deepening and rotation of this layer. So this is very comparable to the classical Ekman model, especially the unsteady solution. This unsteady solution, in fact, describe the formation of this uh, classical Ekman layer com combined with some inertial motion. And uh, what is important is the velocity of rotation and uh, the velocity of deepening of this layer is depending on eddy viscosity. So the main idea is to get from this kind of profiles some estimates of eddy viscosity uh, coefficient uh, in this 3D surface layer. 
Um, so for that, we have to investigate this uh, Ekman layer in, oh, sorry, in different conditions. And from the theoretical point of view, uh, it's possible to derivate okay, more complicated uh, Ekman layers with variable AD viscosity. So this is possible analytically. And we did uh, this uh, with uh, the group of Victor Schrira in Kiel University. Victor Schrira was formerly in the uh, Shershoff Institute. And uh, in fact, uh, there were a series of uh, um, uh, works. Some of them were more theoretical about uh, Ekman sp spiral with uh, uh, varying uh, AD viscosity, especially to take account of uh, stratification, for example, stability analysis, large AD simulations, uh, especially in atmosphere. So you can see the formation of the rolls here. And this is something we are now undertaking with very high resolution model spectral element methods with Ilias. Uh, there were some large dissimulations also, and observation, especially in atmospheric boundary layer, and a very few one in the ocean. Okay? So the main idea is that the vertical profile of Ekman solution exhibit inflection points, so we have a inflection instability that will create some structures. So this is one point. And uh, now if you go to the real life, uh, these are some um, maps of currents. These are satellite data that all help to validate them in terms of structures, because this is velocity, this is uh, uh, water color. And this is the deployment of instruments. So you have instruments for air, boundary conditions, instruments for the surface layer of the water. And under uh, um, uh, AUV, autonomous underwater uh, vessels, uh, that in fact are measuring from some depth, let's say about 10 meters, to the upper part. So we have measurements up, uh, up to down and measurements down to up. And then we can reconstruct uh, in a, a quite uh, accurate way the uh, very fine vertical profile of velocity. So you can observe now very complicated situations because uh, we have to superimpose to the uh, Ekman solution also the background circulation. So it's a more complicated problem. And for that, we decided to have a 3D investigation of the surface layer uh, by, in fact, um, trying to uh, extract from uh, information of velocity profiles uh, information concerning eddy viscosity. For that, we need to uh, uh, use some optimal control methods. So this is a, a fast review. Um, I will speak only some experiments about, uh, let's say, by hand with simple situations just to understand what happens. And then we uh, decided to um, use um, very fast uh, simultaneous perturbation stochastic approximation. I will explain a little bit that, but was developed for inter engineering problems. And we will compare to the classical finite difference uh, local gradient descent methods. Uh, in in uh, the afternoon, there will be some presentation about adjoint met methods uh, with the NEMO model, which is another approach. Okay, so the, the first uh, point, if we have a very quite simple profile, we can try to extract the Ekman co component, and from this, it's possible, let's say by hand, to uh, using a least square um, approach, uh, the vertical profile of AD viscosity, which is far for a constant, of course. Uh, then there were uh, other possibilities, so we, we, we started with this uh, SPSA approach with a simple algebraic model, which is uh, very classical in uh, uh, marine science concerning the surface layer, uh, which is so-called the KPP profile, uh, profiles of AD viscosity you can see here. So this is a spline third order law, and we need to adjust the coefficients of this law uh, thanks to uh, the uh, measurements. So here we have only three par parameters, and the method uh, was applied uh, successfully on model, on model, of course, uh, situations uh, for the beginning. So we start the model, and then we uh, perturbate the solution, and we recover the good, the good point. Uh, then we uh, decided to uh, go to more complicated and more realistic models, and we used the model of uh, turbulent kinetic energy, which is implanted especially in this NEMO model. And now we get eight coefficients to be adjusted. And this SPSA method will be able to adjust all these eight coefficients, but together, not one by one, like in a classical gradient method, but all together. So uh, this procedure will go faster. Uh, I will just present some results about CK, which is a dominant factor coefficient uh, for AD viscosity, and uh, some examples with uh, um, uh, threshold factors, uh, minimum of TKI, for example, and Prandtl number. 
Okay. Uh, so uh, just to recall very quickly uh, how these coefficients are, uh, in fact, introduced, uh, they just um, put, um, relate the mean, uh, the mean gradients to the turbulent ones. Okay. Uh, so they are introduced uh, here. So we have Km, Ks, and Kh. Uh, Ck is coming here to the uh, expression of Km, so it can be dominant here. And uh, we have uh, this point number which relates uh, uh, diffusion of uh, uh, temperature uh, to uh, momentum. Okay, so this is the classical uh, turbulent kinetic energy. So I, I, probably most of you know about that. And these are numerical experiments. So we start. Um, we okay. We used um, 1D model. Okay, 1D uh, representation that represents 1D. Um, uh, let's say vertical profile, and we have temperature and velocity, and this is extracted from a realistic simulation. Okay, so this is a, the time evolution of a vertical profile in a realistic si situation uh, using a NEMO model. And then we will perturbate this and try to recover uh, the turbulent uh, coefficient. So uh, this is uh, the uh, so-called model available data, and this is optimized prediction. So you can see that we have a very good recovering of this with the method. Um, how it works, uh, in fact, there is some, uh, of course, attractor which is given by the uh, real solution. And from the first guess, we will converge to this uh, point. And uh, here we compare uh, this method in red with, uh, in fact, finite differences which are applied to each coefficient. So there are eight exercises to optimize uh, the different coefficients in blue by the uh, classical method, and in red we go in the same way. So how it works, with classical gradient methods, we are adjust one by one the eight coefficients. With the SPSA method, we will in fact um, um, provide an ensemble of uh, simulations with some uh, Bernoulli distribution of perturbations uh, of normalized uh, co uh, coefficients. So, each of them, but all together. Uh, okay, I think one. Okay, one, one, one is okay. Ah, yes, this this is the explanation. So how it works? So we go one step to another one, uh, following some direction, which is following um, this, and we keep some memory. This is the Nestor of momentum method. We keep some memory uh, of the last um, step in such a way uh, we don't record the same uh, things, so uh, we will converge in a monotonic way to, uh, to this. And this can be observed here. This is the global convergence of the method, so to the uh, AD viscosity coefficient. And then we can uh, uh, observe that we have uh, uh, the convergence of each of the coefficients. This is the, the main CK coefficient, which is converging, you see, from in the symmetrical way. Uh, if we consider uh, the point coefficient that doesn't uh, uh, play any role in this case, in this case uh, with uh, very weak stratification, so you can see that there is no effect. And if we, can, uh, if we take uh, the coefficient of minimum AD viscosity, you can see that we have some asymmetrical behavior because this coefficient will play some role in this part and absolutely not in the other part because AD viscosity, background AD viscosity will be larger than the minimum one. So we don't need Okay, so this is just uh, an effect of, the, of this. So just in, uh, to, to finish some comments, so uh, this was the first exercise before we analyze uh, the data which are now under uh, processing. Um, and then uh, this example proves that uh, it's possible to, in fact, uh, constrain some uh, model prediction with uh, quite uh, good accuracy concerning any viscosity, which has to be adjusted case by case, in fact, uh, to, uh, to this point, okay? Um, applications, are, I, I said, were, are concerning uh, mainly uh, exchanges of energy, but also we have now a new problem with it, which is concerned with the uh, microplastic distribution at the sea surface, because if you get some measurements, you have to understand uh, what is the depth of integration you need to do to have a budget of this microplastic? Because without wind, you will be, get a very, very thin layer of floating objects. With some uh, mixing, you will get a larger layer, and there is a large uncertainty now in the distribution of microplastics uh, in the surface of the ocean. So we got some, uh, uh, some uh, questions about this. Okay, uh, and this method can be applied, of course, for. Uh, a more complicated uh, nested and uh, coupled model with more than eight coefficients. 
Okay, I will escape this, which is another topic, uh, and uh, go to the, the main conclusions uh, that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we can uh, now provide some uh, uh, free observations. Uh, it's limited, with, uh, with, of course, with, with the uh, sea conditions because we have these moving uh, systems. And uh, we developed this fast, fast method for uh, different uh, turbulence model uh, that are in fact developed in, the, in this kind of uh, ocean models, uh, turbul this turbulence model. And in fact, there is a need to uh, uh, revisiting this uh, Ekman boundary conditions. Okay, so I thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Uh, so, uh, Philip, I have one question regarding a slide where you put a picture of uh, glider, of uh, yes. marine glider. Can you specify uh, any uh, actual problems uh, if you if we use uh, such kind of device to measure some parameters? Is it really a good device to measure? Uh, and, no, uh, uh, okay. Well, please uh, explain how maybe okay. how it works or how. Okay. Uh, it's very complicated because um, the glider is moving up and down mm -hmm. and you need to rebuild the trajectory and subtract the trajectory to recover this kind of thing. So uh, from my, my point of view in this presentation, it's very qualitative. So we have order of magnitude of internal waves, okay? But if you want a very uh, precise uh, measurement of wavelengths of thought, um, you will meet a real problem with accuracy. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated uh, system uh, because it's not flowing uh, direct. Direct. So, but the reason we prefer to use AUV, uh -huh. AUV, the trajectory is much more controlled. Uh -huh. okay. okay, but the glider, glider is a chip, or the, let's say, without engine. So it just goes down and up by gravity. Uh -huh. uh, so it's uh, it's cheaper, and uh, you don't know. Uh, you you can let it go and uh, and recover. With AUV, which is much more expensive, you have to follow with some vessel to control the trajectory uh, any time and so on. So it's much more complicated, but much more reliable. Okay. Так есть ли еще вопросы? So um, and uh, could you, if you have a bit of time, uh, explain again because the audience may be not very specialized in the field, the importance of the uh, inflectional instability. So the okay. Ekman, layer, Ekman layer formation and the inflectional instability from okay. physical okay. clouds. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, if you, it's very simple. It's very simple. If you consider this kind of solution, and you you cut by vertical plane, there will be some increase of the projection of velocity of this vertical plane from the top to a maximum and then decrease. So you will get inflection. And so it will decrease and go in this way. So you will get somewhere some inflection. So, uh, but uh, the first, uh, I will say, the first investigations uh, about that uh, by, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Fowler, especially, we did some experiment, Brown and uh, Le Bourgeois and Lely, they, they did some approximation about a 2D flow, okay, because uh, in this time, um, this instability theory was developed mainly analytically for 2D flows. So you needed an uh, assumption of invariability in a given direction, and in this direction, you will choose the vertical plane and then get this instability. After that, it, it was developed 3D unsteady calculation, uh, instability calculations, and so in such a way it's proved that uh, there is a dominant, uh, there is a dominant direction, which is not the first one exactly, uh, in such a direction you will get this kind of instability. This is in the atmosphere. It was never measured in the ocean. This instability was not measured at the moment. It's quite difficult. So we tried to get some uh, uh, observations of uh, streaks by, uh, by radars and so on. It's not, um, you know, if you add some uh, um, horizontal share, you will go um, to um, uh, ah, the name, uh, to the um, uh, 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 Ligmir, Ligmir and stability. But like me, you need uh, horizontal share, okay? But here, without horizontal share, you will also get some uh, Ekman instability. Long mirror, long mirror. It's not long mirror. Uh, so I suggest to say thanks to Professor Philippe Frenier. Thank you. Thank you.